Hi guys, welcome back. So today we are talking about this new palette that I've created. So it's taken about half a year to sort of collect all this and put it together. And it's not quite to the point where I want it, but I'm, I, I want to swatch it for you so that in case some of these colors you might want to use and um, you know, there might be something you, you'd enjoy. So where I'm just kind of looking for here the actual palettes so I've swatched it in this little Sennelier sketchbook and the interesting thing about swatching your colors in different uh, books and on different papers is that the pigments will look different like in this uh, I'll show you at the end but on this paper the shimmer sort of sits right on the top of the paper so it's not getting absorbed at all so it shimmers a little bit more whereas on the paper that we swatch it on it's a cotton paper, it absorbs quite a lot of the pigment, so the shimmer is a bit less. So at first I was thinking of swatching it in this book. So this is a, a little project we're going to do probably in two or three weeks on the channel. So it's creating a sketchbook out of one sheet of cotton paper. So you know, one large sheet of Archers or Saunders Waterford, something from the art shop. You know, cotton sketchbooks can be really expensive, but these large sheets of paper can also be a little bit daunting to kind of do larger artworks when you're just wanting to learn and practice and start to sketch. So in buying one of these sheets of, of the large kind of paper, you know, about the size of a piece of cardboard, you can uh, tear that all up and create one of these smaller cotton sketchbooks for yourself. So I want to do a whole uh, video on you know on making one of these so i think this is a really nice idea and i have done a couple of sketches just a couple of sort of painting sessions in here um just with some new paints and trying them out so some of those you'll see in the uh, video we're doing today but uh yeah we don't end up using that sketchbook <laughs> So here you can see this is the regular palette that I use on the channel all the time. I love this and I have this swatched out on the channel. I've switched out I think three colors out of it um, and I'll show you those in a different video but you can see that, that it's smaller than the palette on you know the one that we will be swatching today. So normally I have these two palettes. The one on the left is my regular palette. The one on the right is like my shimmer kind of a supplementary palette. But I was feeling like I was missing some, um, so some colors. So what I've done here is the one on the left now is like a painting palette. The one on the right is a little supplementary palette uh, that I can you you know pull out if I'm using the other smaller palette as well. And so I'll do the swatches in two separate videos. Hopefully they'll both be uploaded today. So I'll do. Uh, this larger palette and some and we will also talk about like some of my favorite mixes from this palette so this is what we're going to swatch them on today it's this uh, Milford cotton paper so it's the same from the same line as the Saunders Waterford paper that I love but it's um, I think it's slightly easier if you're a beginner it's slightly cheaper on Jackson's and um, it is just another like it's an it's a step up so if you've been using sort of the Walmart uh, paper which you know like I've said this before the Canson XL I've been using that for years and then if you want to um, go sort of in between this and the Saunders Waterford and you need kind of a middle ground that's this is a good one so then we're also using the Escoda Reserva number six um, if you've been watching the channel you know this is one of my favorite go-to brushes so I've just dropped a little drop of water on some of the colors here that I think need a moment to sort of reconstitute and uh, yeah I just like to do that um, so that the swatch is a little bit you know easier to to do for you so this first one is one of my new favorites this year and I think it's become really popular in the watercolor um, 
sort of forum as well. So this is Hematite Violet. This one is from Earth Mineral Arts on Etsy. And I think it's a, it's a beautiful color. She does really beautiful colors. But I think when I um, finish this, I'll just replace it with the Daniel Smith one. This next one is Lunar Violet from Daniel Smith as well. I really love mixing these two colors to create sort of my perfect shadow violet. And you can use a granulating black, a purple and a brown to create a similar effect as well. So this next one is Wallace and Seymour. So they have some beautiful paints. I have a whole video there a little bit. So I wouldn't recommend them for beginners. Um, unless probably unless you're in Europe and you can get them and you know the paints are going to squeeze out really well and you know you don't have to fiddle with them but I do really love them so this is the Blue John by Wallace and Seymour this is one of my favorites and I actually think it might be a little bit similar to Schmink and Neutral Tint so that's one of the ones I am looking at um may possibly getting when we get the dot cards and try those out i i'm thinking about the neutral tint so this next one is a windsor and newton color this is smalt i really love this color actually it's similar to an ultramarine but i think it's got slightly a bit more violet in it it's a really really pretty color and i have a whole um video on this color okay color spotlight Okay, so the next color here is a Nibs watercolor, uh, holographic blue. So this is called Bluebell, and you can't really see the shimmer in this shot, but it's a really, really pretty holographic color. I feel like I've bought this color for my palette several times, and it keeps getting sort of passed along. So I finally have one, and I'm really happy to use it. So the next one here we're looking at is, again, not necessarily a beginner's one. This is Lapis Lazuli. So this is by Daniel Smith. I really love this and you can see this swatched in my like 80 half pan video and the really beautiful granulation and the soft color that, that it um, provides. I really love it. But again, it requires a bit more patience, a bit more handling. So you know ultramarine blue is sort of a good alternative if you're a beginner and then this one is manganese blue hue so this is a daniel smith one as well and i i just felt like i was kind of missing this blue so i wanted to put this in i have like the cobalt turquoise and the cobalt blue in my other palette so i've tried to kind of change it up here and use some different uh versions and different blues that i wanted to try So again, this is a Wallace Seymour color. This is the Sasso Rosso. So when you swatch it out, it has some granules in it, like actual, I'm not sure if you can see them here, but they're actual granules uh, in the pigment. I really love watercolors like that. So you get a little bit of texture, you get something extra and something special on the page. But like I said, um, I wouldn't have even really known how to use these six years ago when I started so you don't necessarily have to have them if you're just you know starting out with watercolor so this next one is another beauty and this is Daniel Smith Tiger's Eye so we did a I did this in the Potter I sort of highlighted this in the Potter's Pink uh, color spotlight and I think quite a few of you got it so it's a really beautiful one they were having a sale as well um, at Michael's on the Daniel Smiths which I didn't even know they carry but uh, this next one here is a Nibs watercolor so this is Germain and again it's a holographic purple it's a really pretty one and while I think of it as well uh, someone mentioned in the comments that the the F up was it the FW inks uh, I'll double check it, but one of the, uh, the PH Martins, Dr. PH Martins nickel, I know a lot of you are after and it's hard to come by. So somebody mentioned that they actually do shipping and they do, um, from their own website and over $35, it's free shipping. So that's a good place to get the nickel Azo, um, sorry, just the nickel ink on my 2020 favorites video. So that was the one that we just watched was... Windsor and Newton Cobalt Violet. 
just an all round beautiful color and easy to re-wet. So this next one here is, hmm, what is this? So this next one is one I've wanted to put in my palette for a while. So this is a pre-mix of Sugalite by Daniel Smith and Pearl White by Daniel Smith. So um, I have just squeezed a little bit of each into the half pan and mixed them. And then you can see it there, it's this really gorgeous color. So I love using these for soft shadows. And I actually just love having that color in my palette. It's just a really inspiring and pretty color to look at. So this next one is the Turner Artist Watercolor Pale Wisteria. So I got this off Jerry's Artorama. I like the fact of these ones that they are cheaper. Um, however, I think this is a little bit hard to re-wet. So but I really do love using it in mixes and everything. So it just depends whether or not you want something easier to re-wet or you want to work or you're happy to work with it a little bit. This next one is one of my absolute favorites from Nibs Watercolors. This is Katia and it's this gorgeous sort of taupe color with a holographic sparkle. Again, I don't think I can even capture these holographic ones on camera. They're really gorgeous. So this one is a freebie actually that Colors of the Iron Range sent with my order. So this is green umber and i think that i'll actually be re like buying this once i run out so this is a really nice one and i absolutely love their shop so if you are a beginner and you are you know thinking about handmade paints but you're not sure where to start colors of the iron range and nibs watercolors are both really beautiful shops uh, you one is more the colors of the iron range is more earthy and the nibs watercolors has more sparkle colors and then this is one of my favorite shops as well this is from rivervale watercolor on etsy it's the first handmade watercolors i ever got she's really lovely and um this is the color verdigris verdigris I will put all these colors and shops underneath the video as well so you can browse through some you'll find on my 2020 favorites video as well or on my blog post about you know my favorite things so this is Sennelier emerald green and it's a beautiful color I I feel like though um, and then we have I think and then we have the Iridescent Jade by Daniel Smith. I've always wanted to try this, but I actually, I think I might pass this one along. I'm not sure. I feel like I really might want to go back to green gold. I feel like it, it's sort of missing in this palette. So with the Emerald and the Iridescent Jade, I might be switching those out for Fuchsite and um, green gold. So this one here is a beautiful color as well. This is Lichen and Sage by earth mineral arts and it's a similar color as well to the wallace and seymour it's something like cumbria horton pale green something like it's quite a long name but it's got the pale in there and I'll, I'll i'll look it up for you but um yeah it's a really beautiful uh green and then this is one of my new absolute favorites so this is Daniel Smith Lapis Sunlight. I really, really love this color. And I'll show you in some uh, mixes after we've swatched this, that if you mix this with some of the colors, so this is why I love their interference colors and the duochromes, because you can mix them with other colors to create some of the, the other colors they offer. So for example, this one here is duochrome aquamarine and if you mix the interference blue with a sort of a green or you mix this lapis sunlight with a green you will also get a similar color to that so we will so then you you, you know it's more versatile to buy them in the interference and then you can mix them with all your other colors and create beautiful colors so the one I just swatched is the Sleeping Beauty turquoise by Daniel Smith I really love this color and I love the fact that you can paint with these actual mineral rocks like the semi-precious gemstones it makes everything so special so i really really love it last year on amazon that was down to a 12 dollars just before christmas as well so you want to just keep an eye on on those more expensive ones 
And then this one here is Nibs Watercolor Sylvia, so it's a holographic silver. It's actually how I found her shop, and it's a really gorgeous one. Again, they're not shimmering very well on camera here, but they're, they're so sparkly and beautiful in person. This is one we haven't talked about much on the channel before. This is uh, Daniel Smith Yellow Iron Oxide. And I was tossing up between this one and the Italian Deep Ochre. Uh, but I ended up with this one because of the granulation. So I'll show you a few different mixes with it at the end. So when you mix this with other granulating colours, it's spectacular. So this one is the Turner uh, Artist Watercolour Bronze. This is also a beautiful one, but again, I might move this to a different palette, I'm not sure. And then we have the Shell Harp Light by Earth Mineral Arts. So I'll show you some comparisons of this again at the end. I really, really, um, I really love the French clay that I have by um, Rivervale Watercolor. I wish she would make more of that. It's a really gorgeous one. It's one I would actually put in here if I had another pan of it so or if I could get it more easily I'm too scared to use it and not be able to um, have it so this is the Turner Artist watercolor gray gold I really like their uh, shimmer like their iridescent colors and their shimmers they do rework quite easily and they are pretty similar to the Daniel Smith one so I think that I kind of compare those in my other palette video, which I'll link below as well. This one has already left the palette, so this is a Holbein Jean Brie number one. So I had a little bit left in a tube and I thought I would try it, but yeah, I've already replaced it with the Wallace and Seymour Cinebresse, which we will swatch in the next little palette. Um, but yeah, I, I thought that you guys might want to see the colour anyway. So it might be something you, you're interested in. You'll see the Chino Bresta in the video at the beginning of this video. Like the little bits of footage, you can, that's the one that's in the palette. So then the next one after that was the Daniel Smith Iridescent Copper. I really loved this one. And then we have the... This is the Schmincke Silver, so it is pretty similar to the uh, Pearl White by Daniel Smith. You can see here the white that I use, and the reason I use this white is because it's so opaque, but it's so easy to re-wet. So um, this is the Grumbacher Titanium White. I absolutely love it. I've tried a couple of other whites, and they're just not easy to re-wet like this. So when I want to use a white, I just... I want it to be very simple and kind of, um, you know, I don't want to struggle with the white. I just quickly want to use a little bit of white and mix it in and it's such a good one to use. I actually only have a few Grumbacher products, but I really love their products. So, um, okay, this next one is another pre-mix. So this is Potter's Pink. It's the Windsor & Newton Potter's Pink and Daniel Smith Pearl White. So. Again, I squeezed a little bit of each into the half pan and then I've mixed it in there. And this is just another one. This is one of my favorite colors and I wanted to have a premix of this. And you can see here the way I'm doing the swatches. So I put some color on, I dip it in water once and then kind of pull the color out with the water. And then I'll go back in and drop more color in on the left side there. So I like doing it this way because you can kind of see the possibilities within the color and also the different colors. You can get a very soft side of the color and a deeper side of the color. And you'll notice as well, I'm letting them run into each other. So you'll see one will have a stronger dispersion properties than the other uh, one, which is a really nice effect. So the color we just swatched was the Turner Artist Watercolor. I'm pretty sure it's the Pearl Red. I did swatch it in my other, like the smaller palette video. So um, I'll just check. It's kind of away in a box right now. So I will check there and get back to you on that. And then this one is my favorite Holbein Shell Pink. So I'm hoping to get one more video done this week. The um, how to, anyway. And then next week, I think we will do a couple of just smaller videos on how to mix pastels and how to mix pearlescent colors 
and possibly a dark florals as well because I'm always getting um, questions on those two kind of things what how to use the white and how to mix the pearl white and I think this is a really good one to show so what I've just uh, put down there is Daniel Smith organic vermilion and then I'm putting down now the Daniel Smith pyrrole orange and if you have either of these two colors so I think they're available in the five mil tubes and then you have a white you can basically mix a shell pink from that so you don't necessarily have to go out and get these other colors so um, I like the shell pink I have already gone through like two tubes of it so it's very easy for me I use it quite a lot so I just squeeze it out and I'm already you know and I, I can just use that often but um, you are able to mix a similar color with the with either of those two other oranges and a white or you know any orange you have in a white so the next one that I put there is the Schmincke lemon yellow it's my favorite yellow um, I've tried I actually just took the Nicolazo out of my other palette and replaced it with Potter's pink because I just never used it I always mix the lemon yellow with um, a brown to, to make the color I want so generally like French ochre or you know an ochre so this one here is the Daniel Smith permanent rose matter uh, I got this one I have road night in the other palette I am not really fussed with this one uh, I think a lot of brands do a similar color so I don't really have a preference and then this one here is I think this is the Daniel Smith opera rose and again I don't really have a preference I think a lot of brands do this color and it's all fairly similar and really nice so I'm just giving you a behind the scenes here this is my new little camera setup that I kind of because I was trying to figure out I couldn't hold the camera and do the swatches and I wanted you to see them up close so that is what I rigged up okay so here um, you can see the dispersion properties and how the colors have uh, gone between each other and I think this is a really good exercise so uh, you can do something similar with your palette and swatch them all next to each other and you'll be able to see like even some of the less prominent colors like the lapis lazuli is very pale color but it's really strong in dispersion I don't know if that's because they put more binder in it but it makes for some really beautiful effects so uh, now I wanted to so I'm just kind of showing you a little snippets here I I didn't really like the way they these were all um, you know swatched on this page so I wanted to just cut them into little color squares and sort of put them in a book and I think that one of the things that I've kind of noticed um, in creating this palette like I said is the lack of a green gold so you can really see that um, there's kind of something missing in that spot between the cool and the warm colors So this isn't really an autumn palette. Uh, I really love the idea of creating an autumn palette like Eretz. So we, you know, next year I might just like maybe do some little, little tiny palettes for each season or something like that. But um, if I can do some more like plain air next year, I'm not sure, but we'll, we'll see how that goes. But uh, I do, I, I, in the beginning of the year I created a palette for my sister for her birthday and then while I was sort of gathering that and I was just using my regular palette I felt like there were some colors missing that I'd like to use so I started sort of gathering and creating this palette and so uh, I'm not sure how often this will appear on the channel this will be more likely things that I'll use like maybe in my studio sessions um, so we'll see it's it's also hard to get on the screen it's quite a large palette so but also I forgot to mention this is from Amazon so this is if you look up enamel palettes 
there's quite a few options I usually I really like the whiskey painters ones Eric just got a beautiful uh, schminker one but this one's only $20 on Amazon so I don't know if it's as sturdy as the actual whiskey painters or the schminker ones but you know for the price it's quite a good palette I really I really would like to get the My Mary Blue. There's a silver one on Jackson's. I linked it in the 2020 favorites. I just think like part of what I enjoy about uh, doing the videos is kind of creating a set and um, creating nice, you know, things to look at. And so I think it would be nice for the channel. So anyway, we'll see about that. I also wanted to say thank you for um, using the affiliate links for supporting the Etsy shop they have helped me to get a few more things uh, for the channel and things that we can look at and thank you also just for the again the support the comments I, I, I so much appreciate the conversations that we have and for you guys sharing you know if you find any links or anything like that like I really enjoyed finding the um, that one of you had found where we can get the nickel ink so the um, you know that's that's just really good because I've been so worried about how do I replace that and I know that a lot of you really liked the nickel ink as well so I wanted to mention that on here so that you can find that on the Dr. PH Martin's website um, you know and free shipping over $35 Okay, so let's see here. We're going to do a few of my favorite mixes and one that I'm going to show you is this uh, The yellow iron oxide and the cobalt violet. I really really love this mix Okay, let's see what the next mix is So this next mix is the smalt and the potter's pink and pearl so I absolutely love this so if you have smalt and potter's pink as well that is a beautiful mix and then with the added pearl white i really love the sort of soft shimmer that it gives again on this paper it they don't sparkle as much because you know the paper the cotton paper is kind of absorbing some of that pigment which you know is a is something you might like so you get more of an understated sparkle so this is the hematite violet and lunar violet mix again like you can mix mars black with uh you know a dark brown and a violet and you'll get a similar um color but i really love it as like that's kind of replaced my shadow violet mix which i really love the daniel smith shadow violet but sometimes i think i've showed it before but sometimes the blue that settles out of it doesn't necessarily match the color palette in my paintings so i've you know i i love having this mix so i know exactly what color i'm going to get so what i'm doing here is i'm mixing the lapis sunlight with first the uh, sennelier emerald green then with the manganese blue uh, so i'm trying to get a similar color to the duochrome aquamarine so that's the duochrome aquamarine that i just uh, swatched and I think it's actually more like the interference blue with a um, maybe a viridian or with uh, cobalt turquoise something like that uh, it's a really beautiful one but um like you can mix it if you have one of these interference colors so and then I think I mixed it with the viridian and I got uh, closer to the duochrome aquamarine now I'm mixing the bronze with pale wisteria and you get quite a pretty sort of it's sort of a peachy color as well there sort of a soft brown towards a peachy uh, you know an ochre with a little bit of a softer undertone and then I'm mixing the smalt with the yellow iron ochre and you get this really gorgeous sort of taupe color I really love this color I think next I tried the manganese with the opera rose so I always like trying to figure out different ways to mix a similar color to cobalt violet so you know with a blue and a pink you can sort of mix it but um, cobalt violet and opera rose are two of my favorites they are not light fast so they're fugitive colors um, so I'm always looking for different ways to maybe try and 
um, mix similar colors, but I really love them. So they, they're always going to be in my palette, I think. And then here we have, uh, let's see, this is what I'm trying to show you here is the smalt with, uh, I think this is the smalt with pearl white. And then I do the smalt with white and it basically goes like the Daniel Smith lavender. And then similarly, if you mix the cobalt violet with white, you will get something like the Daniel Smith Wisteria as well. So again, we'll, we'll go over these in the how to create pastels video, but uh, you know, a lot of these pastel colors you can create with a white, you know, um, so you don't, you know, but they are really nice to have as convenience mixes and um, if you're using them a lot, like I use the shell pink a lot, it's really nice to have that and, you know, to have that available and pre-mixed. But, you know, you don't have to worry. You can mix your own as well. So the last two that I'm going to mix here is the hematite violet with the... So I think I first mixed the lunar violet with the pale wisteria and the hematite violet with the pale wisteria. So... You can mix, you know, either of these with a purple and a white to get a similar thing as well, but they turn into really pretty colors. So I know this video is a long one. I hope you guys are still with me, but um, I wanted to kind of just take my time and make a nice long video for you. I know it's been, you know, I, I, I apologize. I wanted to get this video up. I always strive for Tuesdays, but, and then I think, okay, well, I'll get it up Thursday and yeah, today's Friday. So I apologize for that. Um, this is the sort of, so something I want to do next year is my monthly favorite mixes because I find that every month I am using different colors and finding different mixes. Um, and yeah, so that's something I want to introduce. You can see here what I was mentioning about like this paper is way more sparkly. It picks up the, uh, you know, sparkle a lot more because it's not being absorbed into the paper at all. So this is uh, where I kind of started or, you know, swatching the palettes. But what I, I think what I'm showing you here is just some of where I first kind of started um, looking at some of these color mixes and they're so beautiful so this is just on the Canson XL paper and you can see because it's a cellulose paper the pigment so like wood pulp paper the pigments sitting on top and um, it's just doing some really nice things this is the granulation in the yellow iron oxide and then mixing it with the cobalt violet <music>
So I hadn't intended to do any sort of painting, but I just couldn't resist kind of just trying out some of the colors, having a little play. So um, I'm just showing you here some of the differences between uh, some of the colors here and what I'm thinking about. Um, and you can see there the French clay is in the middle. It's a really beautiful one. I hope one day Rivervale Watercolors does remake that because it's a really pretty one. And then you can see on the top there the fuchsites in the middle there. And although the emerald is a little bit brighter, I just really love the fuchsite. I love the subtle sort of shimmer in it. You can also see the difference here between the Italian Deep Ochre and the Yellow Iron Oxide. And then the Tiger's Eye is on the end in this one as well. And then this is the Smalt, the Cobalt um, Blues in the middle, and then the Lapis Lazuli. And here's the palette with the Chinabresse, not the Jean Brilliant number one. And I think that is everything. So I will go and do the voiceover now for the little palette. And the next video is going to be hopefully a, a pretty one a, um, with sort of some tips on how to not overwork paintings. Next week we'll work on how to create pastels, how to create pearlescent colors. And then we will do a dark florals, I think. So I hope you're doing well and as always leave any you know comments or questions down below and I will get back to you when I can and um, yeah have a good weekend guys I will see you in my next video bye.